It is I, John underscore, Silva underscore, your favorite streamer. Wow. Welcome on in, everyone. Welcome on in. So, today, we have Asploit asking, um, okay, what's the best way to use these hue variation brushes or is there an other uh, slash easier way to get color vibration to avoid flat colors and textures? To avoid flat colors and textures. Okay, so before I actually, sh I will show you, right? But the reason why something will not look flat is not because of the multi color like the multicolored and like kind of um i don't know how to call this kind of like a messy it's like a controlled mess uh type of brush brush stroke is not is not the cure to that to the problem um something will not look flat because of the values so i'll let me just Come forward and explain that like real fucking quick. All right. So if you have a value like this, like that, like this, like this, like this, like this, like that. So the colors are pretty. Yes. I'm not gonna um, pretend they're not. But uh, the reason why something doesn't look flat is because of the range of said value. So when we have a nice composition like this, um, yeah, the colors are pretty cool, but when I turn it black and white, ultimately the range from darker to brighter is what will make it pop. And the same is with saturation. Saturation, um, think of saturation as sort of depth. Every image is different, PSA. Um, but, uh, every, every, every image is different, but in this case, I'd say that the less saturation there is in, again, specific to this, to this image, the less saturation there is, the more on the surface the color is and the deeper or, and the deeper a surface goes, then the more saturated that that'll be because, um, of the color composition going on here, she, she, she has like a cold light um, and then the shadows are gonna read a little warmer, right? So you wanna go more saturated, so uh, here, let me do this, more, more saturation for the shadows in, in, in relation to this image and then uh, less saturated for uh, the brighter you go so you have a variety of you have a range of saturation um there's also a, a hue at least i call it hue shift which is you know even though you have a pink here uh and you go like brighter if you just keep the same saturation uh sorry the same hue of pink it'll just look a, like a brighter pink um, what you want to do is shift the next color that you'll pick into, you shift the, um, uh, da, da, da. where am I going to put this? It's always a struggle. Okay. Uh, here is fine. Okay. Here, here it's fine. Right next to chat, right next to chat here. There you go. Chat a little hard for you. Mwah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is your color that we picked, right? Um, and you want to shift the hue, either left or right, or completely the opposite, whatever you want. Um, so for example, I'll go a little like warmer and brighter, and now the new color uh, will be different, actually less, less saturated too, because we did set that the brighter you go, the less saturated you go. So in this case, you'd have these two colors next to each other. And if I go deeper, deeper, more saturated, and maybe, uh, I, oh, actually, I was wrong, hold on. The lighter color, I forgot that this is a blue light uh, composition. So we'll, we'll go to the right, a little blue, and a little bright, and desaturated. 
uh, a little brighter. It doesn't help that I'm, I'm on a gray background here, right? And now for the shadow, you go more saturated, darker, and maybe a little redder, right? And now you have three different hue shifts. Uh, you have two, sorry, not three. You have two hue shifts. Um, just th that stemmed from the middle um, color that we, we uh, decided to put down, right? So now that you understand that, we can go even brighter and do a bigger hue shift and actually get that blue in there you know and then the shadow uh do the same more saturated bigger amount of red and there you go so it still looks like a a, a gradient right but um each each section um has the hue being shifted right okay so now that you understand that i will show you so that is what's going to solve you solve the issue and why this image looks like fucking cool. Um of course the textures and all the like like mixed colors and all that um are like the icing on the cake that takes all of the <laughs> takes all of the um, uh fucking attention but that's not going to solve your issue. But if you want to do the icing on the cake, now I'll get to it. Um let me hide that. Sorry, chat. I yoinked the heart. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> um, I don't remember asking this question. What? All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, first of all, whatever this works with any brush. Whatever brush you have, I'm gonna use this one. Um, it doesn't really matter. But what you do in Photoshop I don't know how it's going to be on other uh, on other um, softwares but you have something called color dynamics if you are French um, which I'm not but you click on color dynamics and uh, if you want to get the same effect like this you need to have this ticked apply per tip right let me just move this there so you can see the apply per tip because if you have that unticked um then if you have that ticked you're gonna have an array you, you see the effect going on right there it's very subtle i'll i'll make it more intense uh but if you untick it which honestly i usually like to have it unticked um but this is not a silver decode silver uh, so um, but what happens is that even if I keep going, I'm not letting go, it's one color, but if I take my pen off and go again and hold it in, I didn't select any color. So every brush, every new brush stroke that you do will have that variation. Now, I personally prefer this way more than the apply per tip because the apply per tip is a little too chaotic for me and I like control. Um... But uh, I'm just showing you both, both uh, ways. Hi, Miru. How are you doing? Hi. Um, so that's one way to go. Um, I'll just erase it, and um, I'll do the the original version this way. Okay. So let's set all of this to zero, right? So if I do this, nothing is happening. Now, hue jitter. Remember what I said with the hue shift earlier on so the hue jitter the more percentage there is the more it'll affect a wider range of color all right so if i just do it a little bit it'll only get you can barely see that it'll only get like sort of neighboring colors and it's not really that intensive either um the more intense we go now it's fucking like no it it almost doesn't matter what color we it doesn't matter but like almost doesn't matter what color you picked um the more intense you go like 100% you still get it affected but it's mostly value and a slight tint um so what you want uh, to mimic that is you want maybe like a 16% actually let me color pick this again 
Oh, let me do the skin color. Sorry, that that'll that'll make more sense. Um, all right. Uh, maybe a little bit more twenty. Maybe a little bit more thirty. Okay, about thirty thirty percent. Um, for just the hue. Now saturation is how big there is a jump in well saturation, right? So the bigger we go, the harsher the difference will be or the more we'll be able to see it. We want to keep this like slightly like re relatively on the low end. See now we're getting close to that that effect. Um, now brightness is well it's pretty much what it's these are pretty self-explanatory but uh, brightness is the more the more percentage you have the bigger jump between uh, light and dark will be. So you want to keep this... Honestly, I hate the brightness jitter. Even if this brush that you're seeing here has it, I would still not want to use it because it's very it can be very destructive, but for the sake of just trying to mimic it as much as possible, let's give it like a 6%. There you go. So that only sometimes it'll happen. You know what I mean? Um... And uh, da, 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 da. purity, it's kind of a variation of um, the saturation jitter, but it really affects your base color, like a lot or less. So it's it's a saturation slider for the the color you picked, not the colors that are being the new colors that are being added on. If it was a sandwich or or a layer cake. Then this is your, this is your uh, color um, that you picked, and then all the settings you're adding from color dynamics are being added on top. And purity doesn't affect this; it affects the base color you um, you selected. Please keep this at at zero. I don't give a f uh, if this person used like purity or I I don't think so based on what I'm seeing here. But it's just don't touch it. Like, it's there's just no no reason to. Um. All right. So now that we have our new brush, uh, wait, I forgot to save. Uh, let's save it. Easy clap. Okay. Now that we have our new brush, I'll do a little um. Little honestly, I could stop the decodes here, but I'll do a little demo explaining how it's used. So let me bring uh, this brush all the way to the top of my... Okay, We're, finally we got there. All right. Um, so... Here's our brush that we made. So first, you want to paint without the effect, is what I would recommend. Uh, so let's grab this brush here, and I'll do, let's select the little area. Let's select, wait, the, the area that has the most color, I'd say, and you can see the biggest difference, is uh, the nose really stands out quite a bit. Uh, so let's maybe do the, the nose the nose area. So, um, okay, let me just make sure that y'all can see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is big enough. So a little square and we're going to make it the nose right there. So first thing you want to do is go back to the very uh, beginning of, um, these decodes where I said that value and the saturation is the main thing that's making the image like this really cool looking the brush effect is only done at the top. Uh, so we're gonna take care of that first. So let's make the noose. All right. Like so. Now, I don't know if this is exactly like the step, the step-by-step -step layering that this person did, um, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do what 
I see we have a little bit of a little bit of uh, oh another thing is that um, this person also um, what's the best way I can describe this kind of like did little blobs of paint manually without the brush so that's kind of what you're gonna see here on and off but first before you even get to like I'm ah, look at all these little blobs like before you even get there you want to build the value so ignore color well quote unquote ignore color but like just focus on the base first so that you can see the form and then you want to like um there's something moving in my in my room it's a ghost um aren't you afraid you're gonna drop all those brushes I'm good. Um, 100% purity for pure painting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So I am. Uh, I am color picking based on what I see, but what I'm really focusing on is the the brightness or darkness of the color that I'm uh, placing down. Um, the 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 colors that you'll add on top will be uh, actually you know what I am gonna choose a different brush something like a triangle brush will be fitting here um, all right so I'm, I'm painting even though there's all these weird colors I'm focusing on the brightness of each color I'm, I'm color picking probably repeated myself 500 times but it's all good and then So here's a corner of the mouth. Yes. And brightness. Again, brightness of the mouth, brightness of like the cheeks here and there. I'm going to use my smudge tool to blend in. Uh, I don't know if this person used that, but it's what I'm used to do. Uh, you can blend in, just color picking is, is fine. I'm doing a mix of both, to be honest. But I feel like I, I, I can speed up the process by... Alright, again, I'm still focusing on the values and values only. Even though we have all these weird colors. Alright, shape of the nose. Blah, blah. Here we go. There's a little bright brightness here. Let's blend there. Blend the nose a little bit more. All right. And w whenever you blend too much, you can bring back some of the... Since you already have at least a little bit of color, you can um, bring back some of the edges from your brush. Uh, what else? And we're getting the values. Look how the values are getting like close to one another. They're, that's because they're falling in love. That's right, chat. If you're an artist, you'll absolutely find love. Uh, if you're an artist who watches my stream specifically, uh, you'll get your value closer to someone else's value. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so we're doing just the ambient occlusion here of the nose. And we're pretty much ready to do the icing on the cake. The thing that y'all like seeing. Which is um, the multicolored uh, thing going on. But once again, I cannot stress enough how, how much it is important for you to focus on the values um initially so actually the tip of the nose needs to be just a little brighter and here we need just we need a little bit more on the yeah there you go um you'll get used to though like if the thought of color kind of scares you and you're doing multiple things at once it's absolutely fine if you start from black and white and then you build up your colors uh, through um, color layer or um, like any other adjustment layer really or a combination of adjustment layers too 
Um, all right, so now that we have my value is relatively close to hers. There's a couple of areas here it could be done better, like so. But um, it's close enough. And now, for the colors, first. Um, so we're going to do a sandwich here. We have values. Now we're going to add, add blobs of color. And then we're going to use the brush we made. And at the very end, you want to do one last brush over here and there manually without without the crazy looking brush. What tablet do you prefer to use? Um, I love just as much Intuos 5 as I do um, my, uh, my, 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 my iPad because I, I, I use both. Honestly, it's just a different experience. I, I like both. All right, so um, let's grab the brush we made right here. And now what I want to do is you don't want to like, ah, like be too crazy. Oh, I forgot one thing. Sorry. Um, so you can affect, you can make, there's one more thing that can affect the the like how crazy like how how yeah how crazy the strokes look like which is the spacing the more spacing you have on a brush the the less like fine and like it'll look like so i should have mentioned that earlier on this is like a big deal so the the less space there is the more glitchy is going to look like and the more space there is uh you're gonna see each individual like brush stroke uh more clearly so i'm actually gonna give it a little bit of spacing here and there for the brush and um now once you have a base you want to drop it <laughs> get it because you want to color pick you don't want to pick new colors i guess you can but you want to just use um you want to just use the colors that you already have here and glaze over now this brush i actually kind of regret doing it on this brush because it doesn't have a hard edge because it's kind of like fuzzy but you'll still get that very fine um like multicolor. I i don't know if the stream can catch that or not so i'm just gonna pick very selective areas i'm not gonna do it everywhere like this. So, okay, I'll, I'll try to explain better. Um, and I'll, I'll enhance, I'll zoom in. So, if I color pick here, I will try not to go over the area. Does that make sense? So, color pick there, go a couple of times over like this, and I'll, I, I'm not gonna go over anywhere else. And then, I'll go on a different area, like there, and I'm going to go over and do that. You know what I mean? So, it's a matter of, at this point, it's a matter of taste, right? I can just do that like she has here on the cheek. Um, I can also tell that this person uses um, a lower opacity. So, you'll have that effect, but you still see the things underneath. Like, you can kind of tell that on the cheek right here. So we're going to drop our opacity and um, and glaze over in a couple of areas too. So like maybe like blah here on the nose. Um, you can have like here on the chin. Yeah, that, that oh, sorry, um, on the cheek, not chin. Um, there you go. And then you kind of like, you just feel it. You just go with the wave, bro. And um, you can see how, like, in some areas, it seems to have a finer texture, so, like, less spacing, right? Above the lip. The lip would be somewhere here. Uh, and you just go around, and uh, at this point, it's like a matter of taste, really. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit more here and there. And, uh, okay, we're not done. 
Well, I'm gonna call it done here. You get the point. Um, now I'm gonna go back. Remember the sandwich I, I told you that we're, we're making? So, you know, you don't want to leave it just as is, or at least not everywhere. You want to go back and, like, add a few sp spots where you feel like, uh, wait, opacity, back again. Where you just want to add your own... Uh, oh, it's kind of random, I'll be honest with you. It, it's somewhat random. Here and there, just add your own swatches of color and if and again you play with the saturation but don't but be careful to not add like for example uh, a brighter saturated blue like on the nose where there's like a shadow because then when you turn it black and white it's reading as a highlight right so you want to keep again the values in mind so for example where there's bright spots i'm not going to add any uh where there's like light I'm not gonna make it dark in there. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick um, different colors uh, that will fit the value where I'm placing them, right? And I do think there's a little bit of a saturation at the end uh, enhancement, so I'm gonna do that. But I'm just gonna like splash it down here, here. Again, I'm, I, I cannot stress this enough. I'm only adding, for example, if I add this blue there, it looks very off and makes your image flat. But if I take that same blue and try to match it to that area, do you see that? It, it blends in, but the saturation is still there. Like the multicolored um, effect will still be applied. So values are extremely important to make this style uh, work. Like you cannot disregard that. Um, let's just do it here and like add that in there. And uh, and yeah, honestly, uh, I can keep going. I'm just gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna use the sponge tool and saturate it. Uh, wait. Yeah, just saturate some areas a little bit. I don't know if this person used that. It kind of looks like she she or he did uh, in just a couple of areas. And I'm tapping. I'm, I'm not I'm not holding in and like, fuck, I'm burning everyone's eyes. Like, no, I'm just like tap, 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 tap. And like very, I'm being deliberate where I'm tapping. Tap, tap. Uh, actually, I went a little too crazy. Let me go back. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, um, so I hope that helped. This has been um, it's been fun. There you go. Quick recap. Uh, once again, if you want to participate in the silver decodes, all you gotta do, uh, if you're a pleb, is be here when we do them. Ask a, ask a question in the chat, and along with the question, you uh, post. A link to an image um, so that I can see like an example of whatever uh, in this case we can see the colors on the person on the right um, or whoever painted the, the painting on the right um, which was Aaron Griffin um, go give him a follow and uh, yeah Calix will take your question in the chat and he will DM me I am reading chat but um, he will DM me and we're following like a list of first come, first serve. So whoever asks first gets, gets answered first. Um, now the pay to not wait is if you're a sub. If you're a sub, you can join our Discord. In our Discord, we have a room called Silva Decodes. You can already see like some of uh, Decodes questions being asked here. And these will be answered in a sense, faster because uh, you can ask ahead of time. You don't have to wait for me to. Um, you don't have to wait for me to uh, uh, be live, right? So no matter what, everyone gets their answered their questions answered. I do not skip anyone, pleb or sub. And I hope to see you on the next one. All right, see you on the next one.